Hi, I'm Rob Cosman. Welcome to my shop. If you've been following along with our new way of cutting dovetails using the sawtooth blade and the offset of the tailboard to the pin board, I've got a tip for you when it comes to doing half blinds that may really help. Now, if you're not familiar with this, you may want to go back and check out our video, uh, Hand Cut Dovetails, a different approach. We'll leave a link in the, uh, down below. But the problem, this technique is really good on through dovetails. In fact, it's a breeze. I'd never cut them any other way now. But half blinds is a little bit more challenging. I'll show you what I mean. And if you're not sure, half blinds are the dovetails that you find at the front of a drawer. So after you've cut your tails, before you remove the waste, put your pin board in the vise. I like to keep uh, my plane handy so I can keep the uh, pin board flush to the top. Set this back and create a bit of a bridge. I've got the little rabbit in there. Now you would set it on top like that. This is where you go in and you want to measure the thickness of your saw blade on something flat. You want to do it right at the tooth line. And I always like to make sure I hear it drop. And then I know that I've taken into account the thickness of the saw plate plus the set on both sides. Now you would come in here, set it so that the cutter's on the top, slide your tailboard over, and now you've effectively offset the tailboard from the pinboard by one saw thickness. Now that was just a bit of a review. The problem here is now going in and trying to mark using this method with the sawtooth blade without pulling across the end lap, which is the part that you're going to see. And the other problem I'm going to show you in a second. So if you've offset to, my, to your left, you're going to mark to the right of each tail. So what you would do is you would reach down in there and then you would pull that through, but you've got to be really careful because you do not want marks. And typically when we cut, when we make drawers, that the tail pin board has already been finished to the final dimension. So all you're going to do after you assemble the drawer is simply clean up the tail board, barely touching the pin board. So you really can't get rid of any marks you leave. And it's just tough because you're trying to go in there and carefully drag that through, getting a long enough line to be able to follow, but as I've mentioned, not crossing over. So here's the problem that I'm going to show you a solution for. Now you would turn this around. I'm using white pine, by the way. It's nice and soft, easy to work. And I would go in and I would take my, my dovetail marker and based on where that mark stopped, I would continue a line down to the bottom. But you'll see that I was unable to bring that saw curve right through to the end. So in going in and doing this, you kind of have to guess a little bit as to where that's going to line up with the saw curve. Well, let me show you a way of avoiding that. Go back and reset this, putting the uh, pin board flush with the top of the plane. Set this back, put this back in play. Oh, just a second. This is the part I want to show you. Before I finish my tailboard, I'm going to go in and I'm going to purposely saw a little bit lower on the inside. Now this is the face side that we see. I'm going to saw down to the line but tipping the saw back so that my saw cuts are extending below the baseline on the back. Now surprisingly enough it's not something that you really notice in the finished drawer. It remains somewhat hidden. but it really makes this next step a whole lot easier. So I'm careful to stop right on the line. And you can see on the back side that I've gone below. It looks a whole lot worse than it actually ends up showing. Now I'm just going to get rid of this fuzz. Makes it easier and more accurate when I set it on the top of the pin board. Now I can go ahead and put that pin board back in place. Get it flush with the top. Push this back, pull this into position, get my offset, and I'll do this other one, meaning instead of that one, I'm going to go to the right side of this one. That allows me now to reach down in and get right to the side of the tail. So watch this, turn it around. You see my cut has already come all the way through.
So when it comes time to finishing that cut, I'd go ahead and draw it. But you can actually go in there and set the saw right in the kerf, no guesswork, and go ahead and finish the cut. Makes it so much easier than trying to guess even that last little bit. And you don't always get lucky enough to get that close. Sometimes you're a millimeter or two away and it's really a tough guess. Anyway, a little tip for you. Make your half lines a whole lot more accurate. And as I mentioned, when you actually put that together, it's not nearly as noticeable as you would think. You're typically viewing it from the top side and you hardly even see them. If you can, if you can stand that, this will make them a whole lot easier. Good luck. If I can draw your attention to something behind me, it's Purple Heart Project, Rob Cosman. This is a project that we started in the uh, fall of 2016. What we do each year, we do two weeks in the spring, two weeks in the fall. We teach my typical hand tool workshop that I've been doing since the year 2000. But instead of bringing in 12 paying students, we now bring in six. And that leaves us, leaves us room for six combat wounded veterans. Now these veterans we bring in and, and lots of people contribute to this. They, we cover their airfare, their hotel, their meals, and we send each vet home with approximately $2,000 worth of tools. I had one tell me that hand tool woodworking is the only time he finds any peace from the physical and the mental pain that he suffers from. The least we can do is give these guys the option to using this to maybe even self-medicate. It's been amazing the results that we have seen among the 60 so vets that we've had so far participate. If you're interested, please go to my site, robcosman.com. More importantly, please find me a combat wounded veteran that you may know that is suffering. There's a chance that this will help. It's our single biggest problem is finding these guys in order to reach out to them. They go to the site, robcosman.com, go up in the tool banner at the top, and the first thing on the left says PHP. It'll give them the application form. They need only prove that they were honorably discharged and write us three or four paragraphs telling us their story so that when we sit down and try to decide who to bring of all the applicants, we get the guys that need it the most. Appreciate your support.